Hi, this is your host, Andrew Rafael, the founder and CEO of Baintree Wealth Advisors. And I want to welcome you to the Your Wealth and Beyond podcast, a show that was created to help you simplify the financial world and to ensure that you're living your best life now and in retirement. Each show, we're going to be bringing on experts that are going to help you build wealth and most importantly, find purpose in what matters most. Welcome back to a special episode of Your Wealth and Beyond. And today, listeners, you're in for a treat. I had the privilege to sit down with Ed Slot to talk all things financial tax and retirement planning. So whether you're an individual, whether you're a business owner, or even a financial advisor or CPA, today's show is going to be for you. Ed has spent his entire career and built his company on helping to educate all of us on how to put more of our hard-earned money in our pocket and pay less in taxes. He's the author of multiple books. You may have seen his specials on PBS, his most recent one, Retire Safe and Secure. But Ed and I, we sit down and we dig into mistakes that are out there that people are making with their retirement the new secure act bill that may go into effect and what it's going to do to the stretch ira and the required minimum distribution and then we touch on how this is a perfect environment due to the tax cuts and jobs act to really dive into roth conversions to see if it makes sense for you because as ed says if you don't plan today you could have a ticking tax time bomb in the future so sit back enjoy take some notes Without further ado, my episode with Ed Slot on the Your Wealth and Beyond podcast. Ed Slot, welcome to the Your Wealth and Beyond podcast. How are we doing today? Great being here, Andrew. You know what? Summertime, I know New York, is it starting to get a little humid there for you guys? Uh, not here. I'm in an air-conditioned room, and I don't go out much, so it's okay. <laughs> That's right. He is. Uh, you're spending the time studying the tax code. So, Ed, where did the passion come from to to help consumers and financial advisors ensure that they keep more of their hard-earned money? That's an easy one. My background is I'm a CPA, a tax, a tax accountant by trade for many years. I still have a, a small CPA practice still in New York. The one thing that got me going on this was about 30 years ago, just the pure horror stories of people moving IRA and plan money that was kind of new then, and the incredible mistakes people were making. And remember, when they came to me to do the taxes, the damage was already done. I hate to say it, but many tax preparers like me are basically history teachers. We tell you what already happened. Well, that's no good when somebody's uh, sitting in front of you and and you have to say, oh, you know what you should have done? Oh, too bad you did that. You have only you could have done that. Who wants to hear that? And it hit me at that point. I no longer want to be the messenger giving the bad news and be re active and I turned everything around and became proactive and started doing planning. In other words, before it hits the fan, that's what I call planning. And I I saw with these retirement accounts, they were relatively new. People didn't know the rules. And then I would ask and I'd say, well, using a financial advisor, oh, yeah, we have a big company, but they didn't guide us. Or even if they had a small financial advisor, they weren't educated on the rules. It hit me. There was a huge void and it was only going to get worse. And over the years, I created the group that you're now a, a member of, Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group. It's an educational, a highly advanced educational program for advisors to learn the nuances of these retirement tax rules. Most financial advisors are not familiar with them. Even now, many years later, a financial advisor, they might help you make money. But when it comes to retirement planning, that money eventually has to come out. And that's when the horrors begin. It's what you keep that counts after taxes. And if you make these expensive tax mistakes, many of them are not fixable. The tax code is unforgivable in this area. These are costly dents in your retirement savings. So I realized that, you know, this is a big area. It's not being addressed and it's still not being addressed. You know, Andrew, you're a member of this advanced study program and you have been for a few years. In fact, you're in our master's program. And that's the top 
I'd like to say 1% of advisors in the country, but less than 1% of advisors have this knowledge. That means if you're listening, there's a good chance, even if, you ha- if you're happy with your investment returns and who isn't in a, in, a, in a nice stock market, even if you're happy with your advisor, chances are 99% of people do not have advisors that can take them the rest of the way when they come into retirement and have to withdraw those funds and face all these rollover rules and tax rules and RMD rules and so many complex transactions, any one of them can have a huge tax impact or even penalties. And remember, if you're losing your hard-earned money to unnecessary or excessive taxes and penalties, that's less you'll have for what it was intended for, for retirement. So I want people to have more and pay less. But to do that, they have to have a plan. And to have a plan, you first have to have an advisor that has the knowledge to take you all the way through to the end of the game. So that's why I started Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group. And if you look at our website, it's irahelp.com, irahelp.com. And you look for our advisors. We show all the advisors around the country that have this specialized knowledge. It's way less than 1%. And Andrew is one of those in the Arizona area. Yeah. And and you talk about, you said you hit on a point where almost two decades working with clients, it's this reactive versus proactive tax planning. You know, most people, they wait to that 23rd hour. (laughs) It's already March of the, the next year. And they missed out. And it's not that the CPAs are doing things they shouldn't be doing. They're just busy and they're not planners. Same thing on on the investment advisory side. You know, the time that I spend going to your workshops, it's days away the office, but it's invaluable. You know, there's, I think, over 400 of us and getting in a room with, with spearheaded by you and your team, but then just the interaction of other CPAs and investment advisors and CFPs. I mean, we spend two and a half days where most people, Ed, would probably fall asleep. <laughs> you know, we're passionate, yeah. and it's just incredible the amount that we learn and learn from ba- mistakes that the people make, and help each and every one of our clients shift that money from that pre-tax or the ticking tax time bomb over to the most tax-efficient place. Which, if we can get tax-free, that's going to be huge. You know what I think of? I don't know if you ever think of this at those meetings. I say. What do people do whose advisors are not here learning this stuff? And that's where I said that's 99% of people. They don't know. Their advisors don't know. And the really scary part is most financial advisors, while they may be good at investments, when it comes to this critical tax planning that determines how much you get and how much goes to the government, they don't know that they don't know. So your retirement savings, your life savings are at high risk of being lost. Yeah. And, and you, I mean, you think about the billions of dollars that are in pre-tax and, you know, when you have an advisor as you're, as you're working and accumulating, that's the easy part, accumulating assets. The key differentiation, I think, of the advisors that, that work with, within your group and what we specialize in is helping those in the decumulation phase. And that's something where it's a specialized niche understanding where to take the money from, understanding how to ensure there's income, but then also providing uh, the ability to leave a legacy. And that's something that unfortunately, most advisors just aren't ready to handle that. And for us, it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, we're spending time, not just money, but we're spending time at your workshops, but then exams and studying. And then the the wealth of information that you provide to us is just second to none. And, you know, I love, Ed, the fact that I could email your team and I get a response. If we have a complex case, I get a response within within 24 hours, if not maybe four hours. And that's the value of having that camaraderie and learning from the best. So I appreciate everything you guys do. And uh, and I know listeners, if you've ever seen Ed on PBS, you can't hide his passion for this. This isn't made up. This is real. And he gets excited and it exudes to all of us. So, uh, you know, there's, uh, I appreciate it. Well, you have to have a place to go. The people listening have to know they have a place to go where their retirement savings is getting the right planning and being protected properly. And it's really not the case for most people. That's why I got into this. That's why you got into this, because you want to see your clients keep more of their hard-earned money. That's what it comes down to. 
You know, we, we look at this environment we're in right now, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which uh, I know you indicate we firmly believe that this is the golden era in our lifetime where we can't guarantee anything, but we can be, I think, pretty confident this is going to be the lowest tax environment we're going to see over the next six, seven years. Do you agree with that? Well, that comes down to math. And that's absolutely right. Look at the deficits we're ringing up. I mean, you mentioned the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the deficit piled another over trillion dollars into the deficits. And, you know, the deficits can only be fixed by tax revenue at some point. And at some point, the government's going to wake up and rates are going to go back to where they were before, not maybe all the way back, because uh, you may recall, uh, back in the 70s and 80s, uh, the top tax rate actually exceeded 90 percent. Then it went down to 70 percent. Then it went down in the 80s to about 50 percent. Now, that seems high. But back then, you got to see everything is relative where it came from. Back then, when it hit 50 percent, the whole country did a happy dance because it was the first time in their lives they were equal partners with the government on their own money. And they thought that was fantastic. We're even lower now, but it's not going to stay that way. And it's due to math, exactly as you said, the tax rates will have to increase. Uh, I think it was Mark Twain said history doesn't repeat itself but it rhymes and we're going to see that happening. But now, now, as you said, under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, while we're still doing this big giveaway, uh, the tax rates are unusually low, the lowest we have ever seen in their, our lifetime. And now is the time to strike and get some of that money out with the least amount of tax possible. The way to have more, obviously, is to pay less tax. And you can do that now. But that won't last. So with the listeners, you know, high level, what are some of the strategies that they should be looking at, whether they're a do-it-yourself or they've got an advisor that maybe hasn't gone through this? What are, are some things that uh, somebody who's getting closer to retirement should start looking at to take advantage of where we are with the tax cuts and jobs. Well, everybody with an IRA or plan should be looking, not doing, but evaluating with a qualified advisor, somebody like you that has taken the training, not just any advisor, should be evaluating the benefits and drawbacks of a Roth conversion. A Roth conversion moves money from what I always like to say, from accounts that are forever taxed to accounts that are never taxed. That's the big benefit. Once the funds are in the Roth, they are protected from any future higher tax rates. It removes the uncertainty of what future higher rates could do to your retirement savings. But you pay a price. You pay tax on the funds you convert. Now, you should know the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, our most recent tax reform, made these Roth conversions permanent. So if you do them, you can't go back. So that's why you need to be extra double careful <laughs> uh, before you do a Roth conversion. Now, I'm not saying not to do a Roth conversion, but you must do it with guidance, with professional guides. I, I wouldn't do, you mentioned, Andrew, do it yourself first. That might be for fixing cars in your home, but not for a Roth conversion, because once you do the Roth conversion, you can't go back. You will owe the tax. Now, that's not a bad thing. There are reasons to do a Roth conversion, reasons not to do. But uh, if you think your future taxes in retirement might be higher, and some people actually think they'll be lower because they'll say, well, I won't have income. But you don't know that. Uh, you, it could be that in retirement, uh, you, the low rate is a higher rate than it is today. Yeah, and you bring up a good point of, uh, you know, without the recharacterization, what we're doing right now is is helping to gauge if it makes sense, running that analysis. But I think it probably makes sense for most people to wait until the fall oh, yeah. to do the conversion just because they don't know where their income may lie. Right. No, I would even go further. I would say wait till after Thanksgiving because you may have bonuses or extra payments. You know, a lot of the mutual funds throw up dividends in November, uh, capital gains, I should say, dividends and capital gains. And sometimes these are much larger than people expected. So you really have to have a good projection. But many people can fall in the 24% or 22% very low brackets at high income. That's why you have to look at these tax brackets, sit down with an advisor that has the specialized knowledge. And that's the group we are talking about. That's lots elite IRA advisor group. And I'm telling you, these guys like Andrew and advisors all over the country, we 
drum that into them. As you know, Andrew, I'm constantly, uh, we give you the benefits and drawbacks, pluses, minuses, whatever you want to call them, pros and cons of every tax move. So you have all that information. For example, a Roth conversion, you might be better off. You don't have to. It's not an all or nothing. You might be better off over time doing a series of annual smaller conversions using up those lower tax brackets. Those new lower tax brackets are like gold. If you don't use them, they're lost and they never come back. So I would say use them or lose them. That's a, that's first. You might have big tax losses or big deductions. Maybe it's a good year to do more Roth conversions. But this is you need to sit down and do a projection and see what other things on your tax return might be affected. And you have to know that you will have to write a check for the tax on the Roth conversion. But you should know how much that is. That's what I'm saying. Have a good projection. But the big benefit is tax free retirement funds forever. And the bigger item is once the money's in a Roth, there are no more lifetime required minimum distributions at 70 and a half, or maybe 72, depending on what the law eventually is. But uh, that money can just grow tax-free forever. And even if you never touch it, it's tax-free for your beneficiaries. So you're getting something for your money. Yeah, we call it controlling your tax destiny. Right. And, you know, one perfect example, too, is if somebody, let's you, you indicate it has a, uh, a a year where maybe they, they didn't have as much income. Or we have a lot of clients who retire at 64, 65, and they've got after-tax money they can live off of. Imagine going from making 250000 a year to zero. And if you've built up a, a seven-figure IRA, well, now we can play within the tax brackets and really, we call it, we know how much, let's, let's figure out how much pain we want to have right now, we need pay taxes, and then being able to project out and show a scenario of by doing it for maybe four or five years and doing these systematic conversions, how much they're going to save over the rest of their lives. And that's where, as you hit on this analysis, where we show scenarios and we just show our clients, if you do nothing, Here's the potential of how much you'll have to pay in the future. If you do decide to pay a little tax now, take advantage of the low rates. Here's where you're going to save for the rest of your life. And you mentioned the required minimum distributions. But the other thing is, as as RMDs listeners, required minimum and Ed's team has a great, great fact sheet that shows exactly how much you have to take out each year. Every year that goes up. So by the time you're in your 80s, right, you know, it's over 6% that you have to take out. And then, Ed, as you know, a lot of the uh, the ramifications, if our, if our income is higher, then Social Security could be taxed more. We could potentially have a Medicare surcharge. So these are the factors that you need to look at, listeners. It's not, it's not cut and dry. There's so many moving parts. And that's where if you don't have a plan and you don't have an advisory firm that's working for you and working with your CPA, you know, I think you're just you're missing out. And, you know, if you can save on tax dollars each year, that means we're starting off the year ahead of the game. Well, the number one fear in America is living too long and running out of money. I hear it everywhere. I speak to hundreds of thousands of consumers all over the country through public television and other conferences, and seminars I do. And that's the number one item. And most people are worried about losing money in the stock market. Uh, that could be, too. But they don't realize probably the biggest risk is the taxes. You know, in the stock market, if it goes down, you lose your money. If you can wait it out, it comes back. But with taxes, if you lose money to unnecessary or excessive taxes, you're never getting that money back. That's a one way street. So you've got to have professional expertise from the get go. You know, this is not do it yourself or material. And it's not even enough to use, say, an average advisor that just does investments. If they're not doing the tax planning, your retirement savings are at risk. And, and you, you think about the, you know, when, when individuals, we get a question a lot, of, hey, I can't do a Roth conversion because I make too much money. So, you know, listeners, the one thing to remember is, yeah, there, there is a, a limit on contributing to a Roth IRA based on income. But remember, it doesn't matter how much you make, you have the ability to do a Roth conversion. Obviously, it just means you're going to pay more in taxes, but that is a common question that we get. So just know that the conversions are there and doesn't matter how much you make. And then 
Um, a lot of companies now, uh, you know, we offer it to, to our team here at Baintree, but uh, listeners, you got to find out if your 401k plan, your qualified retirement plan or your TSP, which does offer it, does it offer a Roth 401k option? And so that allows somebody who's making more income than would allow them to contribute to a regular Roth IRA, they could put into a Roth 401k. I mean, for instance, Ed, based on you know learning from you all these years, I actually put half of my nineteen thousand. I put it in the after tax, the Roth. Now I don't get the deduction, but now I have a vehicle where I can grow money tax deferred, and as you said, tax free in retirement. That is the name of the game. So that's definitely something to look at. Now again, you do have to pay the tax up front, but there are situations where it really might pay. I'll give you one situation. Let's say you're out there listening, and maybe you've done well and have a large IRA, very large, maybe even a million or more. And chances are you were probably advised, because it's so large, to leave that IRA to a trust. Well, you could have some serious tax problems with that plan. A Roth conversion could alleviate the trust tax for your beneficiaries. Yes, it means you might pay a big chunk of tax now, but then never again. And then if your plan is to leave your Roth IRA now to a trust, you can eliminate the uh, trust tax forever, really, other than earnings after it goes in there. But uh, you can eliminate a huge trust tax problem. Remember, just to give you an idea, for those of you who have trusts with large IRAs, under the tax law, an individual probably wouldn't hit the 37, the top bracket, until after over 500000 of taxable income. But a trust hits that top rate after just 12750 So some of these IRA trusts, especially where they're set up, like most of them are, so that the trustee can hold some of that money back, especially if the beneficiaries might be young, might uh, have uh, lawsuit problems or marriage or divorce or creditors or whatever, some kind of problem with management of money or squandering it. If the trustee holds that in trust, if the Roth conversion is not done, that's a huge trust tax. So you might protect it for the beneficiaries, but you lose it to the government. So this is just one of the many situations where doing a Roth conversion during your lifetime uh, would really work well with the IRA trust plan. And you talked a little earlier about RMDs, you know, right now, as we all know, it's 70 and a half. But let's dig in a little bit on the bill that the House passed. Doesn't mean that it's set in stone, listeners, but the secure retirement bill. I want to hit on a couple of the points that are going to be you know, very important for, for those that are getting close to retirement and also for just legacy planning. So what's going on? What is the House? Or what are we waiting on the Senate to do? And what are the key takeaways that uh, are going to be very, very important moving forward with the Secure Retirement Bill if it comes to fruition? Well, it's called the SECURE Act. It's just an acronym. Uh, most of them are meaningless, so I won't even go into They always find some cute name. But anyway... There's a bunch of retirement provisions in there. It hasn't passed. Uh, who knows you know, when somebody might be listening to this broadcast, but as of, uh, I would date stamp it. I, I don't know if you want to do that, Andrew, but as of July, uh, the beginning of July, let's say nothing has happened. It passed the House and that's it. And obviously, if you know how things work, it has to pass the Senate has to go to the president, but they're busy, always busy with other things. So let's see, uh, some things may happen or may not. But the big item is the elimination of so-called stretch IRA, which is a big part of many people's IRA plans, especially those who have accumulated large IRAs and want to leave the lion's share to beneficiaries. So the current law beneficiaries, if they're named on the beneficiary form, another thing advisors like Andrew uh, in our program, we bang them over the head every program, right, Andrew? Check beneficiary forms. Most people don't do it. Most advisors don't do it. Most financial institutions leave you on your own. If you're named on the beneficiary form under current law, you can so-called stretch. And it's just a made-up word. It's not in the tax law. It's just the ability of a beneficiary of uh, to extend distributions over their lifetime. For younger people, it could be 50, 60, 70 years. So Congress doesn't like that. Congress feels that the IRA was set up as a retirement account. They happen to be right, not as an estate planning vehicle to leave a legacy to your heirs. 
they don't need it for retirement. This was for your retirement. This is not me saying this. This is what Congress is saying. And that kind of makes sense. So they propose to eliminate this extension after death of going out 50, 60, up to 80 years and replace it with a 10 year payout, except for certain special exceptions like a spouse or a disabled person or a young child. So what does that mean? Uh, I talked about trust before. It means most of the IRA trust set up now won't work. So they need an advisor to review and create a different plan. Uh, you'll have to see a lot of that tax will be forced out 10 years after death. Another reason you might want to do a Roth conversion now and lock in a 0% tax rate. So even if it is pushed out in 10 years, at least you won't have a big or the beneficiaries won't have a big tax hit later on. That's one of the big provisions, and all the planning will have to change. In fact, a better solution, uh, what's going to happen, Congress never really sees that far ahead. They think the eliminating the stretch IRA will bring in revenue. It probably won't because advisors like Andrew and other advisors that are trained in the tax planning will find better uh, solutions because we train them on these things. That's what we do at Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group. And it's training unlike anything else. There's nothing else like it in the country. Nobody else has a program like that, that's for sure. Actually, people have tried, but they didn't have the expertise to, uh, to run the programs. Uh, so clients of Andrews and clients of our other elite advisors will uh, be learning solutions like life insurance, for example. That will move to the top of the list as an estate planning vehicle and replace uh, the planning for IRAs because IRAs just won't be worth it if they have to be cashed out. Worth it as an estate planning vehicle, a post-death vehicle. And life insurance, you could do a lot better. We'll be telling our advisors like Andrew is to maybe scrap the IRA, take it down, pay low tax now, and instead put part of it in a life insurance policy. The bottom line is the beneficiary will have a larger inheritance with less tax, no complex rules, no RMDs. They could still put it in trust. They could still simulate the stretch IRA, but on their own terms. In other words, they'll have a much better plan, more money to the beneficiaries and more tax efficient, meaning they'll pay less tax if they do have to pay some tax now, but a small tax now and then never again. So what this will do, the SECURE Act will force people, especially the ones with the largest IRAs that have the most to protect, to be doing the better planning they probably should have been doing all along. But now they'll be forced to do it. The other provisions in the SECURE Act are not as big. They made a big deal about it. You'd almost think the Congress parted the Red Sea the way they go on and on about, uh, you know, all right, one of the big items, they call it a big item, is changing the 70 and a half date all the way up to 72. What, a year and a half? I mean, and they make the, they crow about this stuff like over and over, 72. Yeah, we gave you, you know, all that does is take out, I mean, it's good, but I think they could have done better. They could have gone to 80 or scrapped RMDs altogether. I don't really see the need for it. People should be under control. Uh, in control of their own retirement accounts and take it out when they want to and pay the tax when they want to. But that's not what we have. So that's one item where they extended it to age 72. They required beginning date from 70 and a half. The only real good thing about that. All right. So you get a break on the first two distributions, but those are the lowest ones anyway. That It only comes out to about three and a half percent. So it's not a big savings. But the big item there is to finally get rid of that half year. Andrew, do you know how many people are confused? Am I 70? Am I 71? Where does the half come in? When's my 70 and a half birthday? Oops, I made a mistake. Now I have a 50% penalty. I took it in the wrong year. All of that half year confusion will go away. So that's one good thing. From uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you and I could have a, a whole three hour show just on the RMD, the deadlines, what that first year constitutes. When can I take it? Is it April right. the following year? And then right. I'm good that year. But these are the things that it is complex, just like the tax code, just like optimizing Social Security, just like Medicare. And that's where sitting down and being educated is key. So, you know, you think about the 70 and a half to 72, they keep pushing that and some of the other things with regards to hardship. But you're right. The uh, the biggest negative of this that people aren't really realizing is that is taking away the stretch and the power of the stretch. 
is is just an invaluable, invaluable uh, way for our clients to continue with the legacy. I think if this comes to fruition beyond some of the planning you've talked about with more Roth conversions or life insurance with um, having that tax-free benefit with now, you know, home health care riders attached to it. Right. But I think you're also going to see the the planning where, and this is going to hurt, I think, the IRS is they're going to, you know, we're going to just say, hey, let's donate this. This is going to go to the charity. Right. right. And then the, so it's going to, it's going to be a double whammy for them, I think. So good planners are going to just come up with the ways and say, okay, this oh, is yeah. going to go to Phoenix Children's Hospital. So um, it, it's an interesting way on in how we as as advisors, we'll we'll evolve with it, and we'll figure out how to help our clients the best way possible. Well, it's like they uh, that saying, "Awaken the giant." You know, they kick the giant. These people with large IRAs. Remember, anybody with a large IRA worked hard to save that money, probably in their four hundred one k. It could represent thirty or forty years work now rolled over to an IRA. Uh, they're going to be incentivized to take action where they were kind of laying low before figuring, all right, they'll get the stretch, no stretch. Now they're going to do some planning. And it's actually, it's always the way with Congress. Whenever they say think they're going to make money, they shoot themselves in the foot. But this is good for people uh, because it will force them to do better planning where the beneficiaries will actually inherit more and with less tax. The attorneys love changes, right? It just keeps so them. So do the accountants. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And True. so do and the advisors. Uh, yeah. you know, because it awakes people to start taking action where they might have been uh, lulled into a false sense of security, thinking everything was fine. Uh, now they're more likely to take action and positive tax planning action that will have them end up with more money and less tax to the government. One thing that we, we hit on almost every workshop, and it's um, I think for the listeners, it may be, it makes sense to go through a little bit of, a, of the caveat here with regards to beneficiaries on IRAs, uh, qualified money. So a lot of times we see somebody put a revocable trust as a backup beneficiary. And their trust is not set up to be a lifetime trust. It was just, hey, that's what they did because they thought that's what they should do. What is what is the problem, the, the main problem with that that, that you see with, uh, with just the complexity of having a trust listed as a primary or contingent beneficiary, and how could it negatively affect the beneficiaries? Well, it is a problem, but it is also necessary in certain situations. The problem is, as I said before on the program, that most advisors creating these trusts or advising do not have the specialized IRA knowledge. They use these garden variety, I call it, or boilerplate trusts that are the same for any assets. And if you notice at the beginning of every one of our workshop course manuals that you get twice a year, I have a section called IRAs are different. And all the reasons why IRAs don't play nice with other assets. They have their own tax rules, own distribution rules, RMD rules, trust rules. And really the average a trust is not going to work for an IRA. It has to be set up as a specially qualifying IRA trust, and most are not. Now, the reason most people name a trust, at least they hopefully this is the reason. Uh, for, let me go back the other way. Uh, why should people name a trust? And when a client asked me, oh, I was just with my attorney, he said, name a trust. And I said, why do you want a trust? And the first two reasons don't count. Uh, because my attorney said so, that doesn't tell me why. Second reason to save taxes, that's not a reason because in some cases, the high trust tax rates I just talked about actually accelerate taxes. So tell me again, why do you think you need a trust? And the answer comes down to some version of one word, control, post-death control. And I don't blame people. They have a million dollar IRA or two or three million or large IRAs. They don't want it squandered by a 25 year old or even a 40 or 50 year old beneficiary that can't handle money or may have uh, marriage problems or lawsuits. Uh, so when do you name a trust? Well, when you have maybe a minor beneficiary a disabled beneficiary, an unsophisticated beneficiary, a beneficiary you don't think is good with money, might squander it, might be vulnerable to people preying on them, a spouse who can't manage money or needs professional help. That's why you name a trust. And trusts do work well with large IRAs. But under this new tax rule, if it's enacted, they will not work well at all. And they'll, for the most part, cease to exist, I think, because they'll be replaced with a life insurance trust trusts and better solutions that don't have the complications and better tax outcomes. But so those are the problems with the current IRA trust. They're not even done correctly. And the problem is 
nobody finds out about this until it's too late and the damage is done. What do I mean by it's too late? When the person dies and then they find out, oh, the trust doesn't qualify, it has wrong provisions, it doesn't follow the qualifying rules, and now we have all kinds of problems and you probably would have been better off without the trust. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a trust. For certain control reasons, you might need a trust if you have a large IRA, but this is where you have to have expert advice. And these are the kind of things that our team at Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group is a back office to our members like Andrew and our 400 members around the country, uh, if they have a question, if Andrew has a question, yes, somebody comes to you, Andrew, with a large IRA, they have a trust. As you know, you have our back office. First of all, you have all the knowledge that we give you. But if there's a question, you know, you can come to us. We're your back office to go through this. There's a lot of money at stake in these IRAs, and you want to have an opinion uh, based on expertise. And let's say you did everything right with the trust qualified and so forth. The one thing, too, is right now with the way the law is, there's a required minimum distribution on a stretch IRA. Right. If the individual is listed, then it can be based on their life expectancy. So one of the challenges is if the trust is listed and everything else, like Ed said, it, it goes through and it qualifies and it this, that and the other, the trust has to use the oldest life right. expectancy of the beneficiary, which you know, we had a situation, the uh, client came to us after everything was said and done and had a 50 year old as the oldest and like a 15 year old as the youngest. Well, now each of these shares had to be, the, the money had to be taken out based on the older person, which meant that they had to take out more of that money each year. And it really over time negatively affected all of the younger beneficiaries. See, now in that case, you would advise, or if we were in, in that case, we would advise separate trusts for each of those beneficiaries. So the 15-year-old could go out maybe 60 years. But that's not going to happen in the future anyway if this law goes through and you need better planning. In fact, all the planning will be inverted. If you remember, I said one of the exceptions to this mandatory 10-year payout is a surviving spouse. You could have a spouse now, everything's inverted, that is 75 years old, that effectively has a longer life expectancy tax-wise than a 25-year-old, because the 25-year-old would have to take it out in 10 years, where the spouse could roll it over and keep going to age 95 or 100. <laughs> That's so true, and especially to a second, third marriages if there's right. age differences. So we talked a little bit about RMDs, and most likely, whether it's 70 and a half or 72, it's going to stay, right? I think that that's that's pretty. Uh, we could be pretty positive on that. What we um, well, actually, there's a Senate bill. Uh, who knows where any of this is going? They had it ratcheted up, maybe all the way to 75. So who knows? So uh, uh, something's going to happen. They're all agreed that you got to get rid of that half year because nobody understands it. I'm guessing some congressman couldn't understand it and said, "Let's scrap this whole thing." For me. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You know, so a lot of times we sit with a new client and we'll start looking at statements and, and digging in discovery meeting. And, and let's say they're over 70 and a half. And I mean, too many times, as you know, Ed, just because of the, the advice that's out there, you know, we'll ask them, uh, they're 73 and we'll ask them, hey, did you take out? Uh, I don't see any distributions for last yeah, year. Right. Did you take out your RMD? And they look at me like they, they just saw a ghost or like, what, what are you talking about? I didn't. I, nobody told me I had to take it out. So w there are ways to help remedy that, right? If we made a mistake and we forgot to take out our RMD, what can we do to help fix the problem if we obviously start getting the right advice by a firm or a CPA that really knows what they're doing? Well, it's not terrible. There's no RMD prison yet, but there is a 50%, that's 5-0. Uh, prison might be cheaper, uh, a 50% penalty on the amount you should have taken out but didn't. So if your RMD was 10000 and you didn't take it, you have a $5,000 penalty. The good news is that the penalty is rarely assessed if you take action. What should you do? As soon as you discover you missed one or several years, you immediately take the back year distributions. Now, you can't go to the back years. Uh, you can't go back in time uh, unless you had a time machine. But our, other than that, you would have to take them now. So let's say, just for example, we're in 2019. You missed the last two years, 17 and 18. For whatever reason, you might have had a medical issue. Or you weren't sure. You got bad advice. Doesn't even matter the reason, although you have to have some reason. Uh, 
uh, other than you just didn't care. You know, <laughs> that, that won't work. Uh, but uh, yeah, whatever reason. So what you would do now in 2019, you would take the makeup distributions for 17 and 18, plus you have your 19 distribution. So you would have a heavy amount of distributions this year because you have your makeup distributions plus your current. And then you go back and file what's called form, and this is something you might do with your accountant, form 5329. It's a special tax form uh, where you ask IRS to waive the penalty. But the first thing you have to do to qualify for the waiver is write a little statement. It doesn't have to be an autobiography. It can be a couple of sentences. People get too carried away. You just were, the, but the, the things that IRS wants to know is that number one, you made up the misdistribution. So you say, you know, due to a financial error, an oversight, a misunderstanding of the rules, I just wasn't aware of it, a death in the family, a medical, whatever it was, anything, pretty much. Say, so due to that reason, I was confused by the rules, wasn't aware of it, but I um, took immediate corrective action and made up the past distributions, and going forward, I'm on schedule taking current distributions. That's it. And they will waive the 50% penalty, so you're off the hook, except you will have a bigger tax bill in the year you took the makeup distributions because those are added to the current years. And we've over the, the years, um, I think we've done it a handful of times of help somebody who didn't have, uh, who didn't take it out, didn't have the proper advice. And we've always had it, uh, again, nothing's guaranteed, but it's been always where the IRS has been cool with it and they didn't get any additional penalties and so forth. So it's, it's owning up to the problem and then just following the guidelines. And, you know, you guys have been instrumental in making sure when that happens for our clients that we follow it to a T. And these are things like, like uh, I mean, you would think a CPA would know how to do it, but we're having to guide the CPA in what they need to supply. And so these are the type of these are the type of relationships that you should be having with your advisory firm. You know, we're obviously not giving tax advice, but we're helping and working and partnering with the CPAs and the tax preparers and just providing them the overview and the step by step to help ensure that you as the client are going to be handled well taken care of. Well, here's one thing you cannot do, and some CPAs get this wrong. I'm glad you brought that up. They're not as well versed in the problems here. Sometimes CPAs, especially the old timers that remember the days before computers, you know, they'll say, ah, you missed a few years. Let's just correct it going forward. Let well, sleeping dogs lie, forget the past. Well, you know what? IRS has computers now and you can't forget the past. They will know if you missed an RMD, required minimum distribution. And you have to file that 5329. That's the tax form, the 5329. Because if you don't file it, you are never off the hook. Now, you might hear your CPA say, well, it was so many years ago, there's a three-year statute of limitations. Not for this, because under tax court rulings, the court has ruled several times that Form 5329, because it has its own signature line under the law, will be treated as a separate tax return. If you don't file it, the statute of limitations never begins to run. So you have that 50% penalty hanging over your head forever. So the one thing you cannot do is ignore it. But that has been, I've heard that advice before, so I'm glad you brought that up, Andrew, because you can't ignore it. You have to address it, file the 5329, ask for the waiver with the simple explanation I gave you, and IRS will waive it, and that will be the end of it. You'll be back on track without a penalty. Love it. And we get a lot of questions from, from clients that are still working and they're like, I don't need the income. I don't want to take my RMD out. Oh yeah. So walk the, uh, the listener through maybe this is a little known tidbit that uh, gotten a lot of advisors don't know, but if somebody still working has a 401k, what is the benefit there in regards to RMDs and how is the system currently set up to protect them? Well, there's a couple of benefits. You mentioned the plan. If you're still working, say you're 75, most company plans allow you to put off or defer taking your RMDs. You don't have to take them while you're still working. As long as it's not your own company, if you own more than 5% of the company, basically it's your company self-employed, it doesn't apply to you. But if you're in a big company, uh, they have what's called a still working exception, which means you don't even have to take RMDs until you retire. But let's say you're Money's all, so that's good to know. 
that will help keep your tax bill low while you're still earning. So you don't have to take wages and required minimum distributions the same year. But that only applies to the company plan of the company you're still working for. Uh, people get confused. If you have an IRA, there is no still working exception. So even if you're still working for your company, if you also have an IRA, you still must con continue the RMDs from there. But if you're over 70 and a half taking RMDs from your IRA and you're charitably inclined, you should be using something called QCDs, Qualified Charitable Distributions. They're more popular and tax efficient than ever before, especially under the new tax law. What the QCD allows you to do is to stop making out checks. We, we saw this last year at tax season. People are not getting the memo. It was a big change in the tax law. and People saw it for the first time on their 2018 returns. How did they find out? They went to their accountant's office. Remember what I told you up front, Andrew, the history teacher? He tells them, oh, here's what you should have done. Why? They come in with their checks to charity. And now the accountant this year had to say, can't use these anymore. Uh, they're not deductible because you have a new higher standard deduction. Most people found that they were taking the new larger standard deductions and not itemizing, which means they got no benefit for their charitable contributions. They took the standard deduction instead. So what you can do if you're an IRA owner is do your charitable planning through the IRA, through a qualified charitable distribution. The way it works is you take a direct transfer from your IRA to your favorite charity or your alma mater or a hospital or whatever your cause is. And you have the funds transferred directly from your IRA as a QCD to the charity. What that does, it excludes that income from your tax return. So that when the dust clears, you not only get the new higher standard deduction, but essentially you get the deduction for the charity you didn't get before. Actually, you know, you get better than a deduction. You get an exclusion from income that can offset your RMD income. Remember I said you still there's no still working exception, so you still have to take RMDs from your IRA. But if you give to charity anyway, do it this way, and you can offset the income from your IRA, at least to the extent of the amount you give to charity. And that's the way to give charity, to get the new higher standard deduction plus the exclusion from income on top of that. That lowers your income for things like Social Security tax, Medicare surcharges, medical expenses, anything tied to your income. So that's the best way to give to charity. So if you're giving to charity, do it through your IRA. But not everybody qualifies. The only people that qualify is for IRA owners, not 401ks, IRA owners who are 70 and a half years old or older, or IRA beneficiaries who also have to be 70 and a half or older. So you must have an IRA and you must be 70 and a half or older. But that's a big group. If you're in that group taking RMDs, why pay tax on them? Give that money to charity. If you're going to give to charity anyway, do it this way. I'm not saying give more to charity to lower your tax bill. I'm saying do the same giving you were doing before, but just do it a different way and you'll save money on your taxes. I'll give you an example. If somebody's in the 24% tax bracket, the new low tax bracket, and they give away $10,000, and let's say their RMD, their required minimum distribution from their IRA happens to also be 10000 but they give 10000 to charity through a QCD, that RMD won't be taxable. That person will save $2,400 on taxes by giving the same gift on the same amount of the gift. They'll save $2,400 in taxes in the 24% bracket. So this is a huge tax saver, and it can offset the income from your RMD. So that's another way to put more money in your pocket. And remember, IRAs are the best money to give to charity because they're loaded with taxes. You're better off doing that and saving your other money for your beneficiaries. Yeah, the, the QCD, which it's always been an important component. I know back in the day, we'd have to wait till like December 27th right. to see if Congress would initiate right. it. So now, you know, it's quote unquote locked in for forever. Right. Uh, but it is, it's the biggest no brainer out there. And it's just so few people. I think whenever I ask a client or a prospective client, nobody's ever heard of it. I just had a situation, Andrew, where a client 
I just did, you know how I do a lot of these advisor programs around the country. I did one last week and I gave this idea and the advisor emailed me back. He said, you know, one of my clients is a big uh, giver to a cancer charity because uh, my advice was go to the charities. They're not up on this. He says, I called the charity and this is a major cancer charity. They said they never heard of it. Imagine the donations they would get if they would do it this way. You know, I think you just brought up a great idea there, you know, getting the messaging out there to the local charities here. You know, if we go and educate them that, hey, we can do a little workshop on this and just help right. make sure that their donors are aware of it, whether they become clients or not, they could go back to their CPA, their advisors and say, how come we didn't know this? I mean, think about it, listeners, if you got to take out $20,000 and even if you're going to gift and donate a thousand. Who cares? Why not have it go from from the custodian? The one thing that um, you have to know, though, is, you know, we use TD Ameritrade as a custodian, but the 1099 at the end of the day is not going to necessarily break it down for your tax preparer. So it's important that if you did a, a QCD, that you keep your CPA on board so that they know out of that $20,000 distribution, if you did 5,000 of it, as Ed, as you said, directly to the charity. So that's the important part. It has to go from the custodian. They have a form, but they'll send it out directly. But you got to make sure that your CPA knows that you actually did it or you may not get the full benefit. You're right. Uh, the 1099-R, which is the form you get in exactly your situation. Let's say, you, I think your example was 20000 and 5000 went to charity. You should only be paying tax on fifteen, but the form will show 20000 is taxable. You have to tell the CPA there is no coding on the 1099 you receive. Very, very important. That's just the whole point is have a team and make sure everybody's working for you. So you listeners, uh, you can hear the passion that both Ed and I have. I mean, you and I, Ed, we could sit here for five <laughs> hours and discuss, uh, but that's one of the reasons that uh, we're going to have you. I I'm so excited about this. We've been wanting to do this for a long, long time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. October 22nd, listeners, and uh, again, obviously local Arizona, Phoenix, Scottsdale, but we got Ed and his team. They're going to be coming out here specifically for a night, and we're going to go through all of what we discussed today and even dig deeper in how to go from having your hard-earned money tax, all the different strategies that we learned that Ed has over his career helped other advisors and other consumers put more money back in your pocket. That's going to be October 22nd at McCormick Scottsdale. In the show notes, we're also going to have the details on that. We'll be getting that out to you listeners, both clients and non-clients. Um, you love doing that, don't you, Ed? Oh, yeah. And these are fun events. I know, I hate to say it's about saving taxes, but we make this fun. And people start to understand the strategies. And I love when the light goes on and they say, oh, wow, this, you know, and the wheels start turning and things happen. People tend to take action. And it's really to protect your hard-earned money. We give lots of solutions, talk about Roth conversions, all the things that you, you've heard us talk about and how to put the plan into action. And if there's one thing, to have more, keep more and make it last. Move your money from accounts that are forever taxed to never taxed. I love tax-free. And at the end of that program, you will say, I love tax-free too, because I get to keep all my hard-earned money. That's the big plan. That's what we'll be talking about October 22nd. So I hope to see you all there. Yeah, we're going to bring the sexy back into the tax plan. That's it. <laughs> the sizzle. Let's call it the sizzle. Love it. Um, <laughs> so with you, um, as we end today, I know you, you've you been a big component with regards to getting your messaging and public TV, PBS. Let's just talk about your, your new show and where the listeners, how they can find it, and really just your passion for educating, but also helping public television with donations, and everything that you've been doing all these years. So the program is called Retire Safe and Secure. It's your newest version. So walk us through what that looks like. Right. All up to date for 2019. And it's all over the country. So you actually have to uh, find your local station. And most of the stations, I've been out there to do them live. Like in Arizona, I was actually out at ASU. I think that's where we did the show where public television is in your area. And uh, you contact, I don't know the, if that's the name of the station. Is that, do you know your, because, yeah. You know, yeah, it's uh, just the PBS, basically PBS Arizona. Yeah, but I believe, I, I'm sure I was at the university. That's where we did it, ASU. Oh, yeah, ASU's uh, right yeah. here. Yeah, so Arizona yeah. State right there in Tempe. Right, right, right. 
And uh, so you contact me uh, or look them up online because they show it at all yeah, erratic times. Uh, you know, it's 200 stations around the country and they all show it at different times. But I know they show that one a lot because I was out there to do it. Matter of fact, uh, the first thing I did, they, they got me there. They liked to show me the sights and they showed me the big boulevard with the uh, front part of the Psycho movie where that, where that tower is up there. You know what I'm talking about? With uh, in, in down in Tempe? Yeah, wherever the, the, there's a street and there's a uh, landmark building they show me, which has like a big radio signal on the top, and that's the opening scene in the original Psycho movie. And they said that hasn't been touched since that movie was, uh, it's a landmark yep. now. Yep, so you know that. That's what they were most proud of. So <laughs> 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 we're part of the Psycho movie. Yeah, you know, it's the, uh, just the, the messaging, getting it out there, the, the passion for what you do. And, you know, listeners also, you could go to, as, as Ed, you mentioned earlier, I IRA help. It's not just for the elite advisors, but listeners, it's where you can find wherever you are in the country, who can you talk to that's part of Ed's group. And also you'll be able to sign up for the different monthly IRA updates. You guys are continually oh, yeah. putting out just fantastic information, not just for the members, but for those that sign up for the regular consumers. Yeah. One thing I want to mention in case people don't know what I do, I'm a CPA, a tax advisor, retirement expert. I do not sell products. I don't sell stocks, bonds, funds, insurance, annuities, none of that stuff. I'm a tax advisor. And my mission ever since for 30 years has been the same, to match consumers with competent financial advisors who have specialized knowledge in this area, because I think it's critical going into retirement to be with the right financial advisors. Most don't have the specialized knowledge. So that's why I'm on this program with Andrew. That's why we have Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group. So consumers can have a place to find advisors with expertise when your life savings are on the line going into retirement. You may have one chance to get this right. You know, your IRA, these tax rules, it's like an egg shell. You break it. There's one chance to get it right. The average advisor is not up to the task. And that's why for 30 years, I've been training the very few advisors that invest in their education. And my message to you is if your advisor does not invest in his education, then you shouldn't be investing with them. Yeah. I mean, think about it. You spent 40 plus years working, right? You may have 40 years of retirement. You can't make a mistake. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family to make sure you've got all the pieces of the retirement puzzle put together because I wish it was easy. We don't know how long we're going to live. You mentioned earlier that's the biggest fear, healthcare costs. So by saving on taxes and being smart and efficient and knowing the rules, and you can't do it on your own. So that's where, you, you know, Ed, your, your passion for getting it out there, helping us. I, I really just appreciate what you guys do. I'm looking forward to seeing you on September 18th, 19th, 20th. We'll be holed up at the uh, Weston. Yeah, that's our own uh, training session in Dallas. But I'm more excited now about seeing everybody there October 22nd because your crew can come to that. That's right. We're going to have some fun. We're going to learn. There'll be some giveaway and then there'll be a chance for uh, for each of you to sit down and, you know, just ask us questions and see if you're on track. So, Ed, uh, I know your time's valuable. You've said it all. I know we could say a lot more, but, uh, you know, thanks for all you're doing. What? We're done already? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let me tee up for another hour, listeners. <laughs> uh, boy, that flew by. Man. We're having a good time. But a lot of great information. And, Andrew, you're doing a great job getting this information out to people who desperately need it. So I'm proud to be on this show. Awesome. And guys, this is just tip of the iceberg of what we do. All of your situation, everyone's different. Everyone's got their own story. So whether you work with us or another fiduciary firm, make sure that you have the best team out there because you deserve it. And those that team, that team should be continually learning and putting you in the best position to have success at retirement and beyond. So, Ed, thanks again. We appreciate it. Listeners, tune in later this month for another episode of Your Wealth and Beyond. Happy planning, everybody. Thank you for joining me for today's episode of Your Wealth and Beyond. To get access to all the resources mentioned during today's podcast, please visit Baintree.com forward slash podcast. And be sure to tune in later this month for another episode of Your Wealth and Beyond. 